thing we'll be calculating this limit right here, and the first thing that we should do is plugging zero into all the x to see what we get, all right? And when we do that, this right here is just going to give us one, l and one is zero, one over zero is infinity. Likewise here, we also get l and one, which is zero, one over zero is also infinity. Infinity minus infinity, we have to do more work for this. And as you can see, we have two fractions subtracting each other. So why don't we just combine the fractions to see what we get? So first, we will have this is equal to limit. And yes, you should always write down the LIM x approach to zero. I don't know how many times you want to write that, but just write it down every single time. OK, so for the first fraction, you know we have to multiply the top and bottom by ln of x plus 1. So let's do that right here. I will just write down ln parentheses x plus 1. And then, you know, for the second fraction, we multiply the top and bottom by that. So we will have to subtract this, ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1. So that's on the numerator. And then we divide this by, of course, this times that. Let me put this down first. ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1 times the other one right here, which is ln of x plus 1. And now, let's go ahead and see when x is approaching to 0, here, this is pretty much ln1, which is 0. And this is also ln1, which is 0. 0 minus 0 is 0. And likewise, when you're plugging 0 into all the x right here, you see this is ln1, which is 0, times 0. Anyway, we have a 0 over 0 situation. And this is actually better because we can use L'Hopital's rule, all right? So this, by the L'Hopital's rule, I will just put this down. This is equal to. All right, I'll just put down LH for L'Hopital's rule. And let me first write down the limit as x approaching to 0. And what we are going to do is, on the top, I will just put down d dx. Right? We just differentiate the top. And we will also differentiate the bottom like this. OK, so take the derivative of ln of x plus 1. We get 1 over x plus 1, just like that. And then we are going to differentiate this. Let me put on the minus first. And now the question is, what is the derivative of ln of x plus square root of x squared plus 1? Well, let me just do that on the side real quick. So this is going to be my first note. I'll put this down right here in blue. right? We are going to differentiate this only. So let's go ahead and put that down. D, dx parentheses ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1, like this. right? And then we need another parentheses. OK, so first of all, we know the derivative of ln of something, it's going to be 1 over the inside. right? So we have 1 over this, which is x plus square root of x squared plus 1, like that. And then by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative inside. So we multiply by parentheses. Derivative of x is going to give us 1. And the derivative of this, right? So we add derivative of square root of something. We know it's going to be 1 over 2 square root of the inside, which is x squared plus 1. And we have to do the chain rule again, because we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside right here. Derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, so we multiply that by 2x, like that. And now, what can we do? Of course, the 2 and 2 cancel. That's pretty nice, right? And let me write this down for you guys again. This is 1 over x plus square root of x squared plus 1 times. What can we do right here? This is 1 plus x over square root of x squared plus 1. We can just get the common denominator and then combine the fraction again, right? So for this one, we are just going to be multiplying this by square root of x squared plus 1, top and bottom. So we end up with square root of x squared plus 1 on the top. And then we add it with this x, so we just put the x right here. And because they have the same denominator, let me just put down over square root of x squared plus 1, like this. Then what happens? This and that are exactly the same, even though the wooded are different, but we're adding, so the wooded doesn't matter. So I can just say, hey, let's go ahead and cancel this and cancel that, isn't it? So finally, you see, this is equal to just 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. That is the derivative for this guy. And now we can go back here and continue. 
So differentiating this guy, we get 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. And we continue on the denominator as well. And if you can do this question, you know you have to be really good at you know, differentiating the uh, functions and all the stuff. Anyway, for the bottom here, we have to use the product rule, right? So we keep the first function. I will write down this is equal to ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And we multiply by the derivative of the second. Derivative of ln of x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. And let me just put that down as over x plus 1. And once again, this right here is the derivative of that. And then we add this function, which is ln parentheses x plus 1, times the derivative of this. And the derivative of this is, once again, just that. 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. I will just put down this part right here on the bottom, over square root of x squared plus 1, like this. So this is what we get after the, the L'Hopital's rule the first time. And we end up to have a complex fraction, isn't it? Well, let's just fix that situation. So you see, I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by the denominators, right? So I will just go ahead and multiply the top by x plus 1 times that, the square root of x squared plus 1. And we'll do the same on the bottom as well. x plus 1, square root of x squared plus 1. And we continue. This is equal to, once again, we have the limit as x goes to 0. And let's see what do we have, right? For the top, you know this times that, the x plus 1 cancel. We have 1 times this, so we just get square root of x squared plus 1. And for the next one, we do this times that, the square root of x squared plus 1 cancel. We have to do negative 1 times x plus 1. Be sure we distribute the negative inside, right? So we get negative x right here and then minus 1, like this, okay? And then for the bottom, when we do this times that, we know that x squared plus 1 cancel, so I have this times that. So let me put this down first, which is square root of x squared plus 1 times ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1. And then we continue. We add this times that, the square root of x squared plus 1 cancel. So we have just this times that, which is parentheses x plus 1 times ln of x plus 1, like this. Okay? And now what? Let's plug in 0 into all the x to see what we get. When we do that, we get square root of 1, which is 1, minus 0, minus 1. So on the top, we have 0. When we plug in 0 into here, you know this is going to give us ln 1, which is 0, and I'm plugging 0 into here. Once again, it's ln 1, which is 0 for the whole thing right here. 0 plus 0 on the bottom, which is 0. All in all, we still have 0 over 0. But the good thing is that we can still do L'Hopital's rule. Just don't give up, okay? So this right here, we're just going to do the L'Hopital's rule again. It's not that bad, okay? And I will just write down the LIM again. This is x approaching to 0. And here is the deal. I will differentiate the top. And I will also differentiate the bottom. OK, so just real quick, because I have to differentiate square root of x squared plus 1, right? Let me just put this down right here real quick. This is my node number 2, so I'll just put it down right here. When I differentiate square root of x squared plus 1, you know that the derivative of the square root of something is going to be 1 over 2 square root of the inside, which is x squared plus 1. And by the chain rule, we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is going to give us 2x. And this and that cancel out. So all in all, we get x over square root of x squared plus 1. That is the derivative. That is what has to go right here. So I will put that down for you guys, of course. x over square root of x squared plus 1 right here, okay? So x over square root of x squared plus 1. And then continue. Derivative of minus x is just going to be minus 1. Derivative of negative 1 is 0, so this is what we have. Okay, now let's see what do we have on the bottom. Here, we have to do product rule. 
I will keep the first function, which is square root of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of this, which is that, right? So let me just put this down as 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. Okay, so we'll do that. And then we add it with the second function here, which is ln of parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1 times the derivative of the first, which is that. So let me write that down as x over square root of x squared plus 1. We are not done. I have to extend the fraction bar. I have to put down plus. And here we have to run through the product rule again. This is my first function. I'll keep that down. Parentheses x plus 1 times the derivative of the second. Derivative of oh, no, x plus 1 is 1 over x plus 1. And then we add this with the second function, which is ln parentheses x plus 1 times the derivative of the first. Derivative of x plus 1 is just 1, so that's pretty nice. That's what we have. And now what? Well, technically, you still have complex fraction, and what we should do is, once again, multiply the top and bottom by the denominator. And this time, you know, actually, this and that cancel, so we just have 1. And actually, we don't need to do that, you'll see. Because this and that cancel out, we have 1. And uh, this right here, okay, I'll just save it. This and that cancel out, that's nice, okay? Let me write down the denominator in blue for you guys. What do we have? Well, this is 1. This is another 1. And here we go again, 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So I will just put down 2, right, from here, plus that, okay? And for this right here, let me just write it down for you guys. We add it with x times ln parentheses x plus square root of x squared plus 1 over that, which is square root of x squared plus 1. And we write this down, plus ln of parentheses x plus 1, okay? This right here is my denominator. And for my numerator, it's just that. You could have multiplied the top and bottom by the square root of x squared plus 1, but you didn't need to, actually. Finally, this is what we do. We're just plugging 0 into all the x to see what do we get. Here is pretty nice. Because when I'm plugging 0 into here, 0 over 1, we get 0. Minus 1, we get negative 1. So you know you're in the right direction because we don't have 0 on the top anymore, right? So that's good. We have a negative 1 on the top, so we should be really happy about it, right? Over. Let's see what we have. On the bottom here, we have this 2. And once again, the 2 is because this is 1 plus that's 1, all right? So 1 plus 1 is the 2. Okay. And when you plug in 0 into here, 0 times this is going to be 0. That's excellent. When you plug in 0 into here, ln 1 is also 0. So this is 0. That's going to be 0 as well. So what do we have? Negative 1 on the top and this 2 on the bottom. Overall, the answer is negative 1 over 2.